Aside from a lifter's preferences and goals, is there anything anatomical that a coach could look at to determine if a lifter would have an adv advantageous leverage for a specific squat or deadlift style? This is an interesting question. Uh, we've kind of answered something like this before on our YouTube channel. Um, there are anthropometric features that I can look at and have a, a, a guess, I can hazard a guess at, uh, that somebody would prefer a particular style or maybe do better at a particular style, but I won't know until after they've exposed themselves to regular training over a long period of time. Um, so if we're just talking about like, let's see how much you can lift today, I would expect somebody with very short arms, for example, relative to their torso and lower extremities to might pull, they might be a better sumo deadlifter, right, than a conventional puller, provided no other training has taken place. Uh, somebody, uh, for example, with really, really long femurs might do better with a low bar back squat, provided that they can rack the bar in a, you know, a secure position. Um, but that's just me thinking about all the folks that I've coached and trained uh, throughout my, my uh, my career, and that assumes no like experience or training uh, by that person pr prior to that test. Uh, so I would feel very, very, very uncomfortable predicting like what type of style somebody should adopt based on their anthropometric uh, measurements, uh, particularly without seeing them lift and without seeing them lift over a long period of time. So whatever style you adopt today is likely to change over the course of your training career based on changing leverages, preferences, skill development, um, and these things you unlock from exposing yourself to different training variations. Um, and I think any sort of prediction I could make is just gonna be weak as far as its predictive power. Yeah, nothing that I can measure on the person when they first come in is going to outweigh the combination of subjective athlete feedback over time as they train, and then objective performance metrics. So I don't think it's imp that important to even attempt to predict. Certainly everybody would look at somebody who has gigantic long arms and say, oh, they're probably gonna be a good deadlifter. Doesn't take a genius to, to recognize that in most people, right? But as far as saying, I'm gonna force you to pull in a certain way because I think that you're built to pull this way, meanwhile, they may be subjectively telling me, I really don't like this, this is not comfortable, okay. I need to recognize that and accommodate for it in the, the coaching or the, you know, the programming plan. Yeah. So subjective athlete feedback and objective performance metrics over, as you said, a long period of time are, gonna, are what will guide those decisions much more so than just looking at somebody and saying, yeah, I'm gonna put you in this box, yeah. right? And that's even better than like any sort of screening test that we could do like, okay, if you place your toe six inches from the wall while you're kneeling and try to shove your knee to the wall, can you touch your knee to the wall? Ooh, you're missing some ankle dorsiflexion. In that case, we need to adopt this particular squat style, both the bar placement, depth, tempo, et cetera. Otherwise, you're at increased risk of injury. So not only did I know SIBO the crap out of that person, one, that's all made up gibberish. <laughs> made up gibberish because it has never been validated in any particular type of controlled setting. Somebody who uses that type of test to predict squat stance, style, et cetera, whatever, may occasionally get right, get that right, you know, or at least to the extent they can be right, uh, and then they're subsequently just, you know, uh, self-congratulating, like, yeah, see, I did it. And so the point then becomes, why would you try to do this, predict via anthropometry, or why would you screen somebody for if they can do an exercise without having them do the exercise? Because that suggests that the exercise itself, doing the movement itself, is so risky, right? Or it's so important to get it right the first time that you have to do something beforehand. And none of that is true. Exercise, even resistance training, even heavy resistance training, even heavy resistance training with bad form, whatever that means, is very, very safe. Very, very safe. Injury rate, injury incidence is very low. The duration of symptoms for people who do get injured is very, very short and self-limited. These catastrophic injuries in general don't happen unless you happen to be a young kid and smash yourself you know, over the head with the plate that you dropped. Okay, that happens sometimes. But, so what I'm getting at is like, why would we do this? How many times have you screened somebody prior to exercise? For their like physical movement? Yeah. Never. Yeah. Nope. Cool.